Okay, class, listen closely. What to do financially before a natural disaster? How to best prepare yourself for natural disasters, because they happen all the time, all over the world, when we're doing velocity banking. How to best to uh, position ourselves so that we don't fumble when we're doing velocity banking, so we don't get confused. I've laid out some really, really good rules to put in place for yourself and things to prepare yourself financially. Okay, so we're not gonna go over what tools or what things I need to buy to stay alive before, during, and after a natural disaster. There's other videos for that. We're going over financially what to do with your money before a natural disaster, right? So let's dive into it. Let's not waste any time. First things first, know your four major numbers, income, expense, debt, cash flow. You need to know these numbers back of your hand every single month. You need to know where every dollar is going in your finances. So first and foremost, get that down. Don't play around. Now, let's say that you are ready to make your next chunk and there's a category four hurricane coming your way, okay? Prime example, I'm in South Florida. We got Hurricane Dorian, Dorian, Hurricane Dorian coming our way. Potential Category 4, all right? It might get real, okay? We might lose some power. Places of business might get destroyed. Trees come down. Roads get blocked, okay? Got to make sure we got a, a you-know-what in line, especially our numbers, okay? So let's say we're, we're in August, okay? It's the end of August or whatever month we're in, let's say you made a chunk four or five months back, you're about to zero out the line of credit, you're ready to make your next chunk. And you hear on the news, hey, your state is now in a state of emergency, all right? So Florida is in a state of emergency currently right now. So we wanna make sure, let's be patient and let's wait before our next chunk, all right? So I would simply say, zero out the line of credit, keep it at zero, and let's wait. Let's wait it out, let's let the storm pass, and then you know, a couple days later we make our next chunk. No big deal, we're not delaying anything in terms of paying off debt. You're already going super fast by if you made your first chunk already, or if you are just learning about the velocity banking concept, let's say you're in South Florida, you joined my program a couple weeks back, and now you're ready to make your first chunk, I would say, hey, let's hold on just a second, let's dial it back, let's be patient, let's let the storm pass, and then we make our chunk, okay? Next thing, I would say, I do this in my personal finances whether there's a disaster happening or not. I always have at least one credit card on a 0% offer, always. So every single year, once a year, I'll open up or apply for a credit card that has a 0% offer anywhere from six to 12 to 18 to 24 months. 0% on purchases. We can throw in the balance transfer, but make sure it's purchases and balance transfers, not just a balance transfer. We want 0% on purchases, why? Because you're most likely gonna be buying a ton of food, gas, supplies, right? Survival tools, whatever you need. It would be great you walk into any one of these stores and you just run up that credit card. You get everything that you need, right? You overdo it because you want to make sure you're fully prepared, right? Will be nice to have access to like a ten, fifteen thousand dollar line of credit or credit card at a zero percent offer. Not bad at all. Okay. Next thing, let's have some cash on hand. I would best determine this amount cash on hand based on your monthly cash flow. So whatever your monthly cash flow is, I would try to have that cash on hand. I would not take out you know, money out of your line of credit like a few thousand bucks. I wouldn't do that. Okay, I would just have whatever your monthly cash flow is per month, whether it's 500 bucks, or maybe you're cash flowing a thousand or higher if you're a higher income earner. Yeah, it might be wise to have a couple of bands cash on hand. But if you're making low income or you're middle class or you're lower income, you're making three, four, five grand a month, and your cash flow is 500 or less, that's about how much I would probably myself take out in cash just to have on me in the what if scenario in case things get really bad during a natural disaster. Okay, look, next thing. If you have 
your debt tool, whether it be a personal unsecured line of credit, a HELOC, or a life insurance policy, a high cash value life insurance policy, I would probably, okay, this is just going against what I just said, but I would pull extra money out into your checking account, not cash on hand. So I don't actually go against it. This is different. This is saying, hey, um, let's, let's have some cash in the checking account, especially if you're doing velocity banking, where you're dumping all your income into one of the debt tools, right? So if I dumped all my income in there and I'm taking money out little by little, right? We're doing velocity banking. I would simply say, hey, let's pull out a little extra money between now and probably like, let's say the storm's gonna hit on a Monday, right? And the storm's gonna last, I don't know, three, four days or something like that, you know, with power outages or whatever. I would pull out money to pay your bills and have extra for the next seven to 10 days. So usually I only pull out money every three to five days. I would go seven to 10 days, just have cash in your checking account in case you need it, just in case, okay? Next thing is I would switch from manual to auto pay. I have a lot of clients that when we're doing velocity banking, sometimes it's a lot easier to just uh, have your bills manually paid. This way, you know, you're know you tracking everything. And then some people just like to do the auto pay. It's no big deal. They, they have a credit card that they run like 50% or more of their bills through on auto pay. That's cool. So if you are on manual on any of your bills and you have the option to go auto pay, I would suggest going auto pay on your bills, okay? And just making sure, you know, as you look into the month or into the next month and you've got this storm coming your way or earthquake, I don't know, whatever it may be, make sure you got all your bills paid up in line so that nothing overdrafts your account. You're not blindsided because you spent a bunch of money on supplies and whatnot. But if you're smart, you won't have that problem because you'll have a credit card that you can run all those unexpected expenses or emergencies through and then you just pay yourself back over time it's on zero percent so you won't have to worry right and worst case scenario you go through this whole thing you still have your cash on hand if you go through that you still have your what your line of credit your HELOC or your policy that you can pull from right so if you have a policy I might pull a couple thousand just to throw into the checking account or if I just have a one of the debt tools I might pull from it put it in the checking account right switch from manual to auto pay on some bills and here are some unique things that we can get into I would call all your institutions ahead of time and ask for a longer grace period why not just ask see, see what they say whether it's your mortgage your credit card debt payment student loans whatever it is I would ask them for a longer grace period and I would even go the extra mile and I would say hey can you put all my debts on zero interest deferred? I mean, hey, you never know. What if I got at least one of your debts to go on interest deferred, meaning they're not gonna charge you any interest for the month of that specific disaster? You never know, just ask. Call, so if, you, if you're a client or you're not a client, you watch my YouTube channel all the time and you have a bunch of debt and you're like, Denzel, I wanna become debt free, but I got a freaking storm coming my way. I would say this, hey, take a look, call your institutions ahead of time and see what we can do about getting a, a, a grace period. J even a grace period would be great. Like what if you had, what if you got like all your bills set up at the end of the month and Hurricane Doreen is coming your way, right? You're like, damn, I got all these bills that are coming out and I need to buy supplies. Hey, call them all up. See if you can get those dates pushed into September, like a week or two weeks later. Try it out, you never know. Asking is key, okay? Another thing, if you're an employee, ask for an advance on your paycheck, why not? So ask for an advance on the paycheck of that specific like week that the hurricane is coming and maybe even the, the one following. You know, so you basically, you, you'll work for free, but you'll have, you know, a paycheck. So maybe you can work something out if you, you're in cahoots 
with your managers or your bosses at work. You can say, hey, listen, um, you know, we got a hurricane coming. And, uh, you know, I'd like to get an advance on my following paycheck. Is that possible, boss? Yes or no? Right? Ask. You never know. I can guarantee you this. Nobody else is going to be asking. Nobody at the company because they're not going to think that far. They're too worried about what they need to do right now. But see, you're smart. You watch my YouTube channel and I help you prepare, right, for natural disasters financially. Okay? Next thing, this is big. This is big. This is big. Mira, no loans. Do not fall into the trap. This is the best time for banks to capitalize on natural disasters. It's the worst thing. It's so unethical, okay? The payday loans, the speedy loans, the crappy loans. You're going to get calls left and right every time you call your bank. They're going to say, hey, um, were you affected by Hurricane Doreen? And you're going to say yes, and they're going to offer you stuff, especially in the mail. You get a bunch of stuff, debt relief program this, debt relief program that. Don't take any loans. I would rather suffer than go into more amortized debt, okay? I'd rather go on food stamps, okay? I'd rather ask my neighbor for help financially. I'd rather ask my boss for help financially than to get an amortized loan for 10,000 or more, whatever the case may be, for a five-year thing. And yeah, they're gonna pitch you a low interest rate, but they're gonna kill you on the back end, okay? I'm telling you, don't do it. No loans, forget about it, forget about it, okay? Just ask for help, key word, ask. This whole thing is all about asking for the most part and taking action, okay? So, ask for help. If you make low income, you're middle class, listen, you need to find out who is the most well financially put off person in my space, in my sphere of influence. Who do I know that is doing well financially and how can I help them how can you be of help to them so they can help you so you want to give first okay not with the intention of getting anything in return although you are going to ask for help so you're going to put it out there you're going to be vulnerable right you're going to be vulnerable and you're going to ask for help say if you're making low income low middle class whatever it is low cash flow you got a ton of debt your finances are in a rut and you got a freaking hurricane or disaster coming your way i would simply say Find out who is doing financially well in your space, whether it's your boss, your manager, a friend, someone in the family. Connect with them, have a conversation, sit them down, say, listen, there's a hurricane coming. I need help. Can you help me? Here's what I know how to do. I know how to change the oil. I know how to, you know, wash cars. Listen, I can, I can clean your house. I can take care of your kids. I can walk your dog. Be of service, give and you shall receive, my friend. So make sure you're asking. Don't take no damn loans, okay? If you get nothing out of this video, if you get anything out of this video, don't take no loans. Please don't do that crap because it's going to affect our whole velocity banking path, especially if you don't have a debt tool and you go and do this and they run your credit or whatever it is. Now, here's something really cool. After a hurricane, we're not going to take any loans out. If you don't have a line of credit, a HELOC, a debt tool in place, they might be more lenient after a hurricane, especially in that area, in that zone. The banks know this. Okay, the, the banks just got smacked. Okay, there might be some leniency there. You never know. Okay, another thing is find out local nonprofit or organizations in your local area government programs where you can get free stuff like food stamps or you know uh, um, just free stuff not loans free stuff see if you can get some free stuff to come your way just by asking you never know I know my mom did this back when Hurricane Irma hit she was able to get some food stamps cool right so you spent a bunch of money Right, if it affects your whole velocity banking, but then you get a couple food stamps and it kind of helps you get back on track, okay? Ask for help, follow the steps. My name is Denzel, hope this video is very helpful to you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. God bless, stay safe for all my South Florida and Central Florida 
clients, subscribers, family members, kingdom citizens. Stay safe, bunker down. If you're heading out of the state, hey, that's great, all right? Make sure you got all your numbers in line, all your bills are paid in advance, got everything set up, and you'll be okay. Have a wonderful day.